Hi, this is Abdul Aziz Khan. I hope all of you should be fine. Uh, if you are following my videos on cloud, so in my previous video, uh, I had mentioned that I will be making uh, different uh, videos on different cloud providers uh, on different services. So in this video, we will be discussing uh, how to initiate or how to uh, run a virtual machine on uh, Microsoft Azure. So if you are interested in Microsoft Azure, this uh, video will help you a bit. Uh, so let's start to build a virtual machine on Microsoft Azure. So I hope you are uh, following my video so you know how we can reach up to here how we can make an account and how we can uh, log in through portal.azure.com. So when you log into this uh, page, you will be, uh, initially you may not come directly on this, but uh, after one or two logins, you should be coming uh, here. Maybe the initial one, okay. For me, it brings me here always. So in the start, it will not bring you here. But uh, this is my home now. So on Microsoft Azure. So let's start a virtual machine. So on this window, we have an icon for virtual machine. Uh, another way is to go and search for a virtual machine. If it is not visible to you, uh, this search icon is already always there. So you can search virtual machine and you can reach the same point or you can use this menu you can find here, there's a virtual machine. So we click here or anywhere, we will come on the same page. So this page, if I already had opened some uh, virtual machines, it should be displaying these machines here that how many machines I have. So because right now I don't have any machine, so I cannot see anything here. So I will add one. So I go in and add a virtual machine. So let's start building uh, our uh, virtual machine. So what it needs, first it needs to know your subscription. Subscription is uh, who will pay the bill. So as I have a subscription of Azure, uh, it will be using the same subscription. If I had multiple subscriptions, if I had added multiple ways of uh, payment, then it should be showing me uh, different uh, subscriptions and I could choose that okay this project or this machine should be charged to which account. After that you need to have a resource group. A resource group is uh, you can say an umbrella of resources which have something in common I mean for example if you have some project and that project needs to access some resources uh, then that should be added in the same resource group. So right now, because this is just a test, I'm not doing anything, but I have made many resource groups. So I will use one of my groups. It's uh, no problem. You can create a new group always. I mean, you can create group, you can give it a name. So we added one resource group. So let's go further. Now this is the name. Uh, I will use the same convention everywhere to make it easy. So the name is any name. If you have multiple VMs and uh, for example, one VM is being used as a web server, one is SQL server or one is something else, you should give a proper naming. But uh, you know, for me, for this video, uh, there is no need for anything. Where I want is very important question uh, because if you want to access some special area. For example, if you want to launch some services in the Gulf region, then it's better that you open your VM in like this UAE North. Or if you want to do something in Europe, because wherever you will open it, wherever this VM should be launched, then all the customers which should be accessing this VM, their latency should be low. So for me, for this test, uh, there is no significance. I can open it anywhere. 
Next option is uh, availability options. Of this VM, I want this VM to be available, highly available, or I have no problem, I mean. So, I have two options. I can make availability zone. In this case, it will ask me that how many zones I need. I can go to one, two, or three zones. So, zones you can see here, these are all zones basically. So three zones means that my VM should be uh, launched in three zones basically. And whatever is the data is inside the VM it should be replicated on all the, those three sites. And if one will go down, the other will uh, take. But the, the three should not be available at the same time. Only one should be available at the same time. But uh, in case of any failure then the second one will take over. Uh, another thing is availability set. You can make availability set. Uh, you can create a set, you just have to give it a name. It's not a big deal. Uh, availability set means that, uh, for example, I just gave it the same name. And if I add two, three machines in the same set, then those machines should take care of each other. So for example, if I am updating one machine, uh, I'm updating some software on, or some license, then the instance which were running inside, they should be shifted to other machines in the same uh, set, same availability set. So it, it is also a kind of uh, uh, making your uh, network redundant, I mean, you, you can do a planned maintenances and everything else. So I gave it a set, uh, availability set. Now the image I will take the same, I no need to change, but there are too many images you can take. Uh, some images, they are charged. Uh, Okay, but like this, you can do server. Uh, it's not charged, so. Okay, now the machine that I'm using, it will take two virtual CPUs, eight gigabyte of memory, and it will cost me $70 per month. So I think this is uh, too much for uh, this. These are the options that I have. Uh, this was the option that I was already using here right now. Uh, it's a default option for me. So it is $70. If you see here, if you go double off everything, the price is also doubled. But if you go here, uh, this is another standard machine, general purpose, one vCPU, half GP memory, two data disks. So oh, for me, this is fine for a test. So let me select this. This is only $3 uh, per month. So if I will even use for the whole month, it will not charge me. Uh, if you click here, you can see that uh, uh, I still have my credit remaining. All my credit is there. So I have $200 credit from Microsoft for one month. So to test this, uh, so I can even use a bigger machine as well, but uh, let me go with the cheaper option. I have no problem. So this is now the next thing is if you want to access your machine uh, through SSH or through a password, uh, I can put a SSH, I can make, a, if I need, I can make a SSH, I can generate an SSH. Uh, key and then I can put the SSH key here and uh, but you know for that I will have to generate an SSH key so I will just uh, use my same name uh, for password you have to take care that uh, you need to provide a password that you don't forget otherwise you will not be able to log into this machine 
password is same like you have to have one capital one uh, lower and uh, one number and one special character so this will be these things will be required when we will be accessing the actual machine so generally uh, the, the the default is only ssh uh, for the inbound ports because uh, uh, you you don't need to open the machine i mean towards internet it is not secure but uh, just to show you people that uh, we are running something uh, i will open this http as well uh, so okay we have opened two ports of this machine towards uh, public internet next we will go towards uh, hard disk right now these things are not very much uh, valuable for us because we are just using a half gig uh, machine but we, there are three options we can have a standard std standard ssd and premium ssd the difference between these three are if you, you will use a standard std then it is a bit slow your io options io per second should be a bit lower so if you want to have some machine which needs to do some uh, big thing with hard disk uh, then you should go to premium ssd and you should increase the ssd size as well so here for our test uh, this is not required so let's go uh, for the encryption we should put the default encryption uh, okay we can add another disk if we why if we want and uh, if you want to add then these are the options you should give a name uh, it should be what kind of disk storage snapshot disk or an empty disk that you should use so as per your requirement encryption should be again default so we will not be using any disk so i will just go back then i can go in networking okay here also currently we will put everything on default because uh, we can create uh, a lot of things for example if i don't want to go for a default network i can create a network of my own but in the network of my own, I will have to manage the IP addresses, the private IPs. So if I don't uh, give my network, then uh, it will use the network from its own uh, private IP range. Uh, public IP, it will assign as at the time of when VM should be loading. So uh, this, uh, if I put it none, then this machine will not have any public IP access. So I will not be able to access this machine uh, from internet. I will only be able to access this machine from this uh, Azure portal. So I just, because I want to show you uh, this machine, how it is working. So I will have a public IP access as well okay let's go further accelerated networking is not required load balancing i don't need right now okay security options monitoring we should have some kind of monitoring okay uh, identity auto shutdown uh, we will not enable backup because if we enable backup we will have to enable we have we will have to add a storage as well so i will not go in that detail i will just show you that if i enable then i will have to uh, use a, a i will have to use a, okay if i enable backup then i will have to use a 
a new vault and uh, I think I will put it. Okay, this is already protected by okay, your subscription is protected by your security center basic plan. So I don't need to provide any kind of backup okay but if i had to provide a backup then this backup should have a policy as well i will have to provide a storage device so let's make it off so that everything goes fine so as we have opened diagnostics so this is also again a storage if we uh, close then we will save that storage as well. Okay, right now I will close it because we don't need any. Okay. Now in this advance is uh, if you need something to be uh, run at the time of uh, the VM is starting. For example, if you want something to run when the VM was starting, then you can add those uh, uh, boot up sequence if you want to add something for example if at the time of boot up you want something to happen then you can add it here if you want to add some extensions like uh, if you want the agent of cloud or if you want uh, climax extension or whatever this is more related to cpu extension kind of things so you can add it from here, like NVIDIA's GPU driver extension. Okay. But let's not go in that as well, because I want to keep it simple for you. So in cloud in it also, we will not uh, write anything because we are not uh, going to add anything. Uh, Okay, now if you want uh, to make it uh, proximity placement group, if, because if, if you have some, uh, for example, if you, are, you have three or four VMs, or for example, if you have launched some servers, and you want to make sure that all of those uh, remain very near to each other, so you can add a proximity placement group uh, because we don't have any group created or already, so there is no option right now. Uh, but if you have multiple uh, resources, then you can add a proximity group and then you can add all your resources in the same group, then they will uh, be near to each other. Uh, you can change the VM generation, you can go to a higher generation VM. There should be some, I mean, some boot architecture should be advanced. So, but we are not going to, uh, also generation two VM don't support some Azure platform features. So, I mean, in a way, Azure is telling us that there's a GN generation two, but please don't use it. So we will not use it. Then we come to tags. Uh, you can add tags to your resources, then they are identifiable through the same tag. For example, if you have uh, one tag, a same tag for five or six resources, then uh, you can, uh, in some other, like say in firewall rules or other parts, you can use only the same tag. I mean, you can apply something on the same tag. So for example, I call it, that uh, this is a, a VM and this is my test VM. So I gave it a test. So for example, if I will open another VM, I will give it the same tag. Then if I apply a firewall rule on this tag, then same rule will be applied to uh, both of these. 
okay let's uh, see it finally i mean that okay uh, this is what uh, we are going to uh, if you see it in the per hour basis then it's not something that you can even give it to a beggar i mean this is 0 0.005 usd it's half cent half cent per hour will be charged for this vm okay let's create let's create this half uh, So the VM is being created. Your deployment is underway. Okay, we have created uh, the VM. IP is assigned. Security is assigned. availability set because it told us that it's part of the package so security group public ip virtual network our network is also made okay network interface is also made it the vm should have a network card to talk to other guys so we just launch one VM and we can see that uh, uh, whatever is being assigned in on the back end. So it's still taking its time. Mm. Okay, so now it has told me that okay, your resource is ready. So I asked him to okay, take me to the resource. So this is my resource. If I go to home now again, uh, then sorry, this is virtual machine. I go back to virtual machine. I can see now that I have one virtual machine with this name, type virtual machine, status is running. It's part of this resource group, it's location in East US. Sources, no problem, maintenance status is no. And it is under this subscription. So I can go inside the machine and now I can see uh, sorry. Now I can see here that this is my machine. This is the public IP. If I click on this IP, it should tell me that this is a dynamic IP. It's not a static IP. As soon as this machine is gone, the IP should be gone. And uh, there is no DNS label. IP is not a part of any DNS. Okay. Overview, uh, something, something. This is uh, the IP. Okay, I copy the IP. I go here. I said, okay, take me to this IP. And what I get, nothing. Because right now this is a virtual machine with no anything running inside. Uh, Unix only running, so if anyone uh, pinged it, it will not be able to tell something. So let's just make a small search. How to run Apache. Uh, I will just copy a small uh, command from here. Okay. Okay, I will tell you about this command. Uh, let me now go back to my virtual machine. Okay, now we have this machine. We check this IP. Currently, it's not showing anything. So now we should log in to the machine. To log into the machine, what we can do is that we can do SSH or RDP or if we have a Bastion host, we can use that. 
Uh, the other thing here, you can stop the machine, start the machine, restart the machine. You can capture it right now. You can save uh, the image of this machine. You can create an image and then you can use the same image to uh, create a new machine. So capture is to capture the a machine image but this machine is a very simple machine we don't need uh, here we can have some uh, beautiful charts uh, one thing if you remember we have some dashboards and uh, we can add these charts and dashboards if you want to have some dashboards and we want to see how everything is going but that thing we will see in our further uh, videos so Right now, I will try to connect. Okay, to connect, I need to do SSH. So I should open the cloud shell. So if you want to open a cloud shell, you have to mount a storage. So this is a very, you can say, very peculiar thing with Microsoft that if you even want to open a shell, you have to buy a storage. Okay. Because it has to save the shell status, so it needs some storage. So <clears throat> <coughs> as you want to go to the shell, so you have to pay for this. <clears throat> so hopefully it takes a bit of time but yes now we are inside our uh, virtual machine so uh, Sorry, we are not inside our, we are in the shell of this. Uh, as you all know, we have to go inside the virtual machine. To go inside the virtual machine, I will have to SSH to the machine. And I will have to provide uh, the machine name and the uh, machine IP. So machine IP is the same IP that we have here we can copy it from here and we can paste uh, this ip oh, it takes the full http no problem okay so it's saying me that you really want to ssh yes i was not joking so it's asking me the password so you should remember the password that you had set when you were uh, so now it's telling me that it is inside uh, this if you see here mm, Okay, here I have provided this password and it says welcome to Ubuntu. So I am in this Ubuntu GNU Linux. So Ubuntu is running here, but Ubuntu is not enough to provide me a response on a HTTP request. So I need to provide uh, something which I had copied from here. So let's analyze. This is sudo apt, uh, sudo apt update and sudo apt install lamp server. So it will update uh, its own apps and then for example it will update Ubuntu if it needs some updation and then it will install one of the known uh, uh, HTTP servers. So, uh, 
hopefully uh, after this uh, we will have we will be able to see something on our public ip address uh, okay Uh, doing a lot of things because a web server takes a lot of space. It's telling me that after this operation, 181 MB of digital disk space will be used. Okay, I don't care right now. Uh, it's still within the $200 limit. So uh, we have to go from here to there. It will take some time. So this is basically, it is installing the Apache web server on this virtual machine. And before that, it was updating the uh, Ubuntu software as well. Because it's a good idea always that if you want, you are installing something, then uh, update the operating system. So it's almost finished now. So we have uh, uh, completed the installation. And uh, within a few minutes, our machine should be having. Uh, it has given me some errors. What I will my SQL demon ID. It was not able to launch my SQL daemon, no problem. Because we will not be doing anything, uh, will not be running any code on it. So we are not, I'm not very much concerned that if everything is uh, uh, installed or everything is running properly or not. Because if I had to deploy a full uh, service on it, then I should be taking care of why it is saying something and then we have to run that part again. So currently it's 98% done. So it's almost completed. Uh, I'm saying that my SQL was having some problem. So, okay. So it told me that it has updated Ubuntu. And uh, in these two things, it was having some problems. Let's just try. Okay, now you see on the same IP address, that initially it was not giving me anything. Now this IP address is showing me Apache Ubuntu default page. So you can see in a very small, I mean, we did not do anything. I mean, we just uh, from my home, I just made a VM and I just put a, a web service and then it is up and running. So just to uh, what is this? I cannot write anything here. It has become very, very slow. Okay, let's leave it here because we I don't want to make this uh, very lengthy. So let's just 
look again uh, on our I don't know why it's giving very very slow okay let's go and see all the resources that currently we are using so if you see we are using one this storage account for the cloud shell this account was for cloud shell it's already named by uh, azure then this my test this availability set which is machine public ip network security group virtual network network interface and there's a disk uh, my test disk and then recovery service world so these services are currently running and uh, if we go on the dashboard uh, i can go on my dashboards so on this dashboard i can see that these are the running services and uh, on some of my other dashboards I can see also the similar thing or the different things. So you can make different type of dashboards and then you can uh, make uh, different kind of, uh, like for example, I have this resource group. I can add this resource group. Uh, So I can ask it to CPU disk. Okay. So this is just data. Uh, it's not showing anything. Okay, let's not go further in this uh, right now uh, because the main idea was to show you that how we can set up a virtual machine and how we can like we set up a virtual machine and i showed you here that this machine is started is running its public ip is accessible from the normal internet so it means that the machine is there running and it's running the same apache that we ask it to run one thing that i want to tell you before we finish this uh, video that whenever you uh, are testing anything then never forget to delete everything when you are uh, finished because even this charges are very low uh, as you see three dollars per month and this storage should also be I'm not sure uh, because it should be very small storage it should not be causing any big thing to me but uh, it's not showing the i can add it's uh, charges as well i can show you how much it's going to be costing storage no not from here let's uh, this is cost management So currently it's saying that you don't have any charges because maybe whatever is being charged is very low and it's uh, part of some kind of uh, quota. Uh, so, but still, uh, as I told you that I will uh, 
like for example we are going to finish it now so i will just show you that if when you are finished when you are have learned something if for example if you were following it uh, on your own machine as well if you're doing the same things then when you are finished when you see that okay i have opened a vm i have used the vm then delete everything uh, because it's better to be safe than to sorry uh, maybe your credit expires anytime and then uh, you get a big bill uh, because you left some vm and some storage running and uh, it will take some time but uh, i hope this video was uh, enough uh, it's a good introduction for you so let's uh, meet in my uh, next video assalamu alaikum